So, hello. I'm a little bit early, better than being late. I was late last time and we've just started a live video. So I'm gonna wait for some people to join us. Hello. <laughs> hello. Have you brought your lunch? You can have your lunch with us. I just ate. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Farrell, Leslie. Oh, it's great to see everybody coming in. Hello, Bruce. Hi, everyone. I'm just waiting. Thanks for being here. So hi there, um, Cindy. It's always a bit nerve wracking getting ready for this, I have to say. And my biggest worry is that I can't figure out the technology, which is why we're a little bit early. <laughs> All right. Hello, hello, hello. I've got lots of great stuff to show you, so I'm glad you're here. Having a late breakfast. Good for you. I kind of had brunch. <laughs> hello, Katie Love Greenfield. Dog Mama, hello. All right. Let's just let some people get in and then we'll get started. How's the weather with you? It's getting hot here. I think it's gonna be in the 90s today. Is that right? Or high 80s at least. Maggie is here with me. She's my, uh, my, uh, what are you? My, my, my courage. <laughs> you know Maggie, I'm sure. I was on one episode of the Shopcast. You were, you were on an episode of the Shopcast way, way, way back. We should do that again. Same, same. Since then. Happy haircut. Thank you. Yes, my COVID haircut. That felt so good. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, did I get it cut too short? I don't know. But I actually quite like it this length. Hello, Sheila from Rhode Island. Thimble Tina. Hello, hello. All right. Shall we get started? Hi, Jenny. Shall we get started? Two thumbs up. All right. So. We just keep soldiering on here at the Woolly Thistle. We're very, very busy with um, some new yarns coming in that we wanted to share with you. Some uh, yarns we've had before that are particularly rare. Um, so uh, this is your chance to get them if you'd like. These are in the shop now. So whatever I'm talking about, if you'd like to jump over to the shop, you can. But um, hopefully they'll last a little bit. Uh, I'll have my newsletter going out to all subscribers on Friday. So make sure you're on our, um, our list. You can go to thewoollythistle.com and sign up for the email there. It's worth it. Uh, you get uh, early notice of things um, and we try to keep in touch the best we can with that. But I do have a couple of things to show you today and they are available in the shop. So first up, I'm really super excited and I know you will be too, that we have Berlin Yarns back in the shop. This is, um, there we go. That's, that's her sheep. Those are Hebridean sheep on the island of Bernaray, which is a, an island in the outer Hebrides of Scotland. So off the west coast, far, far out. It takes a good few hours on a ferry to get there. And you're sailing through the sea like that. It's kind of fun. You can eat breakfast or lunch. They have a restaurant on board. When my nephew first saw it, he, when he, was, he was only four. And we walked on the boat on the ferry and he looked around and he said, oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> I think he thought he was on a cruise ship and it was just a ferry. Anyway, so let me show you what we have from Meg at Berlin uh, Yarns. Um, her yarns come in 50 gram balls. And there it is. This is the Petey Brown. Yes, lots of love hearts for this. I love this. In fact, I did show you on my last podcast, I think my um, shawl that I knitted with this and I'm gonna quickly grab that over here and let's see which way is the right way yeah yeah this way so this is knitted in pd brown four ply fingering white this is the balvraid hap you can find it um on ravelry it's a free pattern by rita taylor i think her last name is uh it was written for blacker and it's a beautiful hap. I would uh, happily knit a, 
quite a few more of these. But it's just lovely in that four ply, dark, dark, dark brown. So this is PT Brown. It's called PT Brown because um, the earth on Shetland is, uh, has a high peat content. That's oftentimes what they'll use for their heat source in their croft. Maybe not so much today, but you, you can still see peat fields being dug there. And so this is the color of the earth and the Hebridean sheep, PT Brown. I love this. All right. Um, Meg also works with farmers on the island uh, who have cheviots, and then she blends it with her Hebridean. And it's always fascinating to see that brown and cream make a gray, which you might, yeah, look at those love hearts. Uh, the shawl is the Balvraid Hap, B-A-L-V-R-A-I-D. You're knitting that? It's a, it's a fun knit, a really nice knit. And of course, it's a hap, which I really like to knit. Anywho, this is, what color is this? Har, which is a lovely gray. It means sea mist, so the har will roll in off the sea. Meg actually sails her sheep from island to island through the summer so that they can graze on the little islands out there. Um, it's just lovely. If you ever get the chance to go, um, I would recommend it. The beaches are phenomenal. I mean, it's freezing cold and you probably won't want to swim, but it's so pretty. And when we were there, there was a herd of cows on the beach as well. <laughs> they were, I don't know if they were meant to be there or what, but they were there. Lovely big cows and sheep everywhere. So yeah, um, and this is her bog cotton, which is the natural cheviot, just a lovely cream. So it's interesting, I think that you know when you combine those two you get this gray i do believe there's another gray as well but i don't have it here all right so these are the naturals and my favorite is the speckled hen because we love hens and this is <clears throat> a ply of the hebridean and a ply of the cheviot spun together plied together i made a hat for my husband out of this and it's really nice i don't know where it is though not knitworthy. And then she has some dyed colors. And they all have great names and they all have the Gaelic or Gaelic uh, name as well, which I'm not going to try and pronounce. I might be Scottish, but I'm not a Gaelic speaker. So Chalet is this pretty sort of blue. It's a blue, but it's sort of a greeny blue. And this one here is Moor. And her labels, these are her um, original labels here. They have a lot of good information on them. A little map of the Outer Hebrides there. And the Berlin boat. So if you don't know, this is um, sort of like a Viking boat, but it's smaller. And it was used in the old days to transport things between the islands, including sheep. So that's where Berlin Yarns gets its name from. And her tagline is seafaring sheep, which is just wonderful. And you know, years and years ago, uh, when my little nephew was only four, he's 20 now, <laughs> we as a family went out to the Isle of Lewis, which is quite close to Bernary. And I remember at night uh, in the evening, sitting outside with a glass of wine and seeing boats, little boats, um, chugging along uh, through the channels with sheep on them. So that's happening all the time there. Uh, this is Dulce, which is a lovely, juicy color. Hi from Sweden, hello. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, um, somebody's asking to see friend Japani cones. Sure, we'll, we'll dig you out some and show you. I also showed a couple in the, um, in my podcast, which you can find uh, on YouTube. Okay, so this color here is, what color is this? Corn marigold, really lovely. And you can see the colors do echo the, um, the landscape there quite a bit. Um, in keeping with that, the sea pink here 
The sea pinks come out this time of year. They're little pink flowers all along the, the beachy uh, moors there. Really pretty. And the last color is Reef, which is a gorgeous blue. These are all 50 gram balls in fingering weight. Oops. Okay. So, here we go. Oh, and there's a brand new color, which is Poppy Red. This is so beautiful. This is brand new and we have a selection or a stock of this. Gorgeous. So there you have it. These are all the colors. I'm sure I'm hiding some back there. And the naturals as well. We just put these in the shop today, right now. And so if you're interested in these, uh, hop on over to the shop. We will not be stocking up on those again until next year at the earliest. So I would get what you need um, if you're at all in the market for that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just gonna <laughs> show you some uh, frangipani right now. Some, someone requested to see this, so here you go. Frangipani is another uh, British yarn. It's spun, it's worsted spun in Yorkshire and then um, dyed and coned up down in Devon in the south of England. And these are 500 gram cones. I think they're 1200 yards. They're a sport weight. And of course, the, this yarn is quite specialized in that it's a five ply with a very tight twist on it. And that's because of what the yarn was originally used for. Uh, this is the, the yarn that you would knit a Gansey sweater with, also known as a Jersey sweater or um, fisherman's sweater, that sort of thing. And um, because of the number of plies and the twist, it's a really round yarn. And so it shows off texture really well. Um, so you can do a lot of knits and purls and it pops. And so the fishermen uh, would, uh, well, their wives would knit them their sweaters and they would knit in um, some um, sort of family emblems or regional, um, regional patterns in the knits and purls so that people could recognize each other from, from the patterns in their sweaters. And also they would knit these sweaters at such a tight gauge. They were sort of windproof and waterproof in a way too, because these guys are out in the North Sea fishing at night, it's cold, it's wet. And this was the solution. And it's great because this is all natural, going back to um, the natural uh, yarn. So not treated in any way. And just the way you knit it, the gauge you knit it at made it so that they could stay warm and dry for the most part inside. Um, the traditional sweaters also had gussets built in under the arm so that, you know, when they're reaching over the boat to pull things in, their jumper didn't hitch up so that they had that extra give under the arm. Um, so there was all kinds of hacks uh, made in these to make them really good. So anyway, this is the yarn. Color. This color is claret, beautiful red. And we do try to keep two or three cones um, of any specific uh, dye lot so that, you know, because you oftentimes will need more than one cone to complete a whole sweater. Um, this color here is clover, very pretty pink. No, that was claret. The red one was claret. Breton red is a much more bright orangey red almost. Uh, this is uh, clover here, which is a lovely pink. And we've got a nice blue here, which is pewter. So we have, I don't know, maybe 20 odd colors in this, uh, in this yarn. So you have lots of choice. And you can knit these, you know, these aren't now just knit for, for men going out on fishing boats. Um, there's lots of nice patterns now that are very feminine. Um, but it's a really nice traditional knit. And also there's just so much great history to read about these, um, you know, the different regions that had these, you can find out all good historical stuff about that, which is fun. We do have a book called, 
um, knitting jerseys, gansies and something um, in the shop. And even the pages inside look yellowed. It's sort of like newspaper inside. Um, and it's got um, a lot of information about the, you know, the different patterns, textures, um, and what they were used for. Someone wants to know if it's good for cables. I would say definitely good for cables because um, because of that round structure of this yarn um, is going to pop. So you're going to get that really nice relief that you want with a cable. Um, and you can play around with the different gauges. You know, I think that's something that a lot of us forget or try to avoid doing is uh, swatch knitting. But if you have an exploratory kind of mentality about it and you try different needle sizes with the same yarn, you're going to learn a real, a lot of stuff about the yarn that you're knitting with and you will find the gauge that you want. Um, and then you can go from there, which is really, really empowering as a knitter. So, any other questions about um, frangipani? Okay. Cindy wants to know if we're going to order more Garth and Orr lace. Garth and Orr lace. Hi, Cindy. Yes, we will be ordering more Garth and Orr lace. Um, we are working with them right now, and it should be part of the next order coming in. If not, it'll be in the one after that. Uh, we are really enjoying working with Garth and Orr. They're really nice to work with. Their yarns are absolutely beautiful, as you know. And um, yeah, we want to support them as much as we can because they're doing really good work. Um, we have this just come in. It's the paperback uh, version of this golden fleece, which is such a great read. It's written by um, Esther Rudder. And I met Esther actually when I was visiting Meg uh, from Berlin Yarns. She was there um, talking to Meg about her yarn for this book. So that was really fun to be a fly on that wall. And we spent the afternoon together and had a lovely time. Uh, this book is all about um, Esther's journey into knitting. She wasn't really a knitter when she started this, though she did grow up on a farm and she could spin. Um, and she uh, went up and down the British Isles talking to uh, sheepy people and yarny people. And um, Blacker gets a mention. Um, I think uh, Uist Wool. There she is, that's Esther. And um, Jameson and Smith and whatnot. So she goes from Shetland all the way down. Uh, she might actually even include the Jersey Islands in here, if I remember. It's a while since I read it, but it's a really good read. It's something great for your book stand. Those are in the shop just today. So I wanted to make sure you knew about that. And um, let me show you this. We decided to put together these six colors of yarn from Rama Fenogarn. Are you feeling a baby vibe? So it's funny, when we looked at the top selling colors of Rama Fenogarn, this is them. And so I think a lot of us like to have a stash of baby colored yarn maybe put away so that when we get that good news that somebody's having a baby, we can whip this out and get knitting. So we thought that this would be a good idea so that um, you can just stash this away for when you need it. Or these are beautiful spring colors too. And maybe you've, you've got a project in mind. Anyway, we've put them together in sort of a grab bag. It's called the baby grab bag and you can get that in the shop uh, today as well. And of course we love Rama fennel garn here. That's a fingering white yarn, really good for baby knits because um, while it's 100% natural, it's not super washed. So it might not be as convenient maybe for mom, but really it's not an inconvenient yarn either. You can just soak it and uh, put a little eucalan in. That will wash it. You don't need to do anything with it. And then all you need to do is squeeze out the water without wringing it. You don't ever want to wring your woolies, but squeeze the water out, lay it out flat and that's it. So you don't need to think about putting it in the dryer or anything like that. So there you go. Um, I have one more thing to show you. Can you stand <coughs> it? Yes, Fife Museum has the Herring Girls Pink. We do stock that color as well. And um, the Herring Girls Pink, I think, is a very traditional color that the girls would wear themselves, which I like. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Very excited about this. We've waited a little bit to get it, um, but so has everybody else. And it's finally here in the shop and we have been ooing and eyeing because it is gorgeous. Are you ready? 
What do you think it is? Tuku will decay. Oh. Let me tell you, we are loving this. These are 100 gram skeins. Normally their yarns come in 50 gram skeins. The DK comes in 100 grams and oh, it's lovely. Doesn't smell, so that's okay. Um, it's, it's got a lovely, um, it's not spongy feeling, but it's, uh, it's quite crisp and solid feeling. And it's got that same depth of color because this is on gray, so it's nice and heathered. So you'll recognize the colors. The colors oops, are the same as their four ply fingering weight and their um, sport weight, which is their sock yarn. But this is brand, brand new. They came out with this DK and I love it. Hi, Pop Silly, how are you? Thanks for showing up here. <laughs> I'm showing off uh, Tuku Wool's brand new yarn, their DK. So of course, um, Tuku Wool comes from Finland and it's the Finn sheep, which is a lovely sheep, actually. They make really good mums. They often have almost a litter of, uh, of little lambs and they're, they're, they birth easily and they are good mums which is so nice. And their fiber is quite soft. Um, and so this is all uh, thin wool, which is lovely. It takes a dye job really well. I think we have 15 colors. I think it comes in 15 colors and we've got all of them. This is one of my favorites because it's that mauve color. This is 121, which is nice. This is one, oh no, they're all 121. That's a lot number, sorry. H28, I was gonna say, I thought it had an H in it. H28, this is H23. What a Wednesday treat, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> this is H36, which is a nice blue. Um, yeah, there's so many things I think you could knit with this DK. Here we've got a gray, which is 03 and H32. Really nice. It is really wonderful. Really kind of excited to get knitting with this. Do a little test knitting. This is H35, a lovely sort of forest green. And then ooh, I've got all these blues here. This one is H26. And we've got H31. This is one of my favorite colors, this nice blue gray. And H27, which is their navy. Does it list the yardage? Oh, sorry, yeah. It says it's in meters. We'll need to convert that. It's 250 meters per 100 grams. I'm, I'm almost positive it said 273. Two, 273? Okay. So that's a that is a little bit lighter than, say, a worsted weight. So DK would be spot on. So we're, we're guessing... Guessing, 273, huh? It's on the website. Okay, yeah, it's on the website. And this one here is H33. So yeah, lots of lovely blues here. Very nice. Right, so. That was quite a lot to throw at you. We've got Berlin Yarns, Tuku DK, this Golden Fleece. Um, we showed a bit of French Panny and the Baby Grab Bag. So that's all going in the shop. It's all in the shop today. Um, and we will be coming out with a newsletter on Friday. So watch out for that. And um, there won't be a podcast this Friday because we had that last time and we're doing this today. There'll be another podcast a week on Friday. So 
I hope you're all keeping well. Um, does anyone have any questions before I go? Happy to answer anything. Somebody pointed out the grab bag would make a nice striped sweater. Yeah, it would. Yeah, that's true. You've got enough here to knit a sweater, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Depending on the size. Well, depending on the size. Yeah. But you, you'd have enough to get going for sure. I mean, actually, you can knit a vanilla sweater, depending on your size, in six balls. You can knit a vanilla sweater in five balls. That's the smallest size. So yeah, you could knit a sweater. These are 50 gram balls each, so it's 300 grams of yarn. Your sample box is out for delivery. That's so exciting. Yes, it's so funny. We had one that wouldn't sell. We sold all of them, and then there was one sitting there for a couple of days, but it did finally go. <laughs> well, don't you hug your yarn? I love hugging yarn. I, I hug and sniff. <laughs> Maybe I sniff people when I hug them too. No, I don't. That, 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 I don't do that. <laughs> Honest. Um, talking about hugging people though, um, I think that I heard that Rhinebeck is going to be happening this year. So um, we'll be looking at going to that potentially. I don't know what you guys think about that. Will you be going to Rhinebeck this year if it's on? Time, of, time to think about that yet. We don't need to make any decisions yet. Yeah. Well, I think that's all I've got for you this time, but it was really good to catch up with you. Thank you so much for showing up and spending a few minutes with me. I appreciate it. And um, sorry, uh, Fuchsia21, can you share the price of a skein? Is that of Tuku or what? Are you still there? Um, so I think uh, I'd be going off the, yeah. I don't have it right in front of me. It's 20 something. It might be uh, more like 29 per 100 gram skein. I'm not sure. It is 29.95. 29.95 for this, if that's what you're asking about. She's, I think she might've gone. Okay. All right, so thanks very much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay cool and keep on knitting. Find your cool spot and knit. That's what I'm gonna do tonight. So thanks so much for showing up. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.